Hello everyone, my name is Jane and welcome to the Moody Book Tag. So today I'm here again with another book tag. I really love doing tags from time to time. I feel like it's so fun just to sit and talk with you. And the book tag that I'm going to do today is the Moody book tag. This is basically a book tag that was created for mood readers like me. It talks about mood readers and just some questions that are related to mood reading. And I say it so many times on my channel, but I'm a mood reader. I feel like I mention it in every video, but it's actually a very big part of my reading and from my reading experience, I feel like me being a mood reader really affects how much I'm enjoying what I'm reading and what I'm reading. It's just a really big part of my reading. So that's why I keep always repeating it. But basically this tag was created by Brittany from Slanted Spines. I will link the original tag video in the video description and also the questions if you want to check it out. I'm really excited to answer about everything. I feel like there is some really, really good questions. And I think that let's just start with the first one. And this is, do you consider yourself a mood reader? So yes, I said it, I'm a mood reader. And the thing is that I consider myself not just a mood reader, I consider myself an extreme mood reader because I feel like my mood can change really extremely. And like, for example, I can decide that I really want to read a specific book, but then an hour later, I won't want to start this book anymore. And it happens to me so much. And the thing is that also a lot of times I start reading a book and then a day, two days after, I'm not really in the mood to read this specific book anymore. And the thing is that I never read multiple books at once because I just can't. So it's two things that doesn't really get along with each other because I started to read a book and then I'm not in the mood for it, but I won't stop reading it and pick another book because I want to finish it first. And this is also another reason why I usually prefer to read books really quickly and not take too much days to read a book because my mood can change really, really easily. So yes, I feel like in general, I'm such an extreme mood reader. I can think that I'm in the mood to read something and then when I'm actually picking and starting to read a book it will be a different book and also sometimes I can't decide in which mood I am like I can't really understand it so yes, I'm definitely a very extreme mood reader. Now the next question is do you set TBR list and do you stick to them? So yes I set TBRs always but that's because I'm looking at TBRs as something a bit different. For me TBR is not a list that I have to stick to but for me TBRs are usually guidelines for me to understand what is my priority right now. Like for example, I'm doing seasonal TBRs, so it's very a guideline for me of which books I want to prioritize than other books. It doesn't mean that I will force myself to read those specific books and to stick to this specific list. I just create this list for me as a guideline and things that I do actually want to read and I do actually want to accomplish and I will try to accomplish, but I just won't force myself. And also I'm doing every month my monthly TBR I have a TBR game that I really, really love to play. And what I decided to do in 2022 is basically try to complete the prompts for my TBR game. Also, if I want to read the specific books that I chose. So now, so far, every month, I'm trying to complete all of the prompts and just to play the game as I'm reading throughout the month and like to complete everything. But I'm not forcing myself to read those specific books. I'm just following the prompts for me to have more challenge and just something more fun to do with my reading. But yes, in general, I do TBR all the time. I do a lot of them, but that's because I really love creating lists. But again, because I'm a mood reader, I can't really force myself to read one of those books if I don't want to. So I'm just trying to keep it in a safe place of me, using it as a guideline, but not making my TBR control my reading. Now, the fourth question is, do books affect you emotionally? Does the mood of a book rub off on you? So I feel like my question is yes, if I like the book. So first of all, if I read a book that I'm not in the mood of, not matter how amazing the book is, I won't enjoy it because I'm not in the mood for this book. So that's first of all, I just won't enjoy a book also if this book is very, very good. But if I read a book that I really, really love, it will definitely affect me emotionally. I feel like if I'm really emotionally invested in the characters and in the plot, I just enjoy the book more because I feel more connected to the characters and what is going on. So it definitely affects my mood because if I read something 
being said definitely will make me a bit sad or a bit happy like depends on the mood of the book itself but it really depends on how much I love the book because usually three stars book doesn't really affect me emotionally but five star books will make me just feel all the emotions that the book tried to make us feel so yes books definitely affect my reading if it's actually a book that I liked and a book that I felt connection to okay so now the next question is when you are feeling sad what do you read or do you not read when sad basically for me I feel like it's a combination of both sometimes I will be sad and I just won't really want to read anything because I'm sad and I want to be sad and not to read but sometimes the only thing that I want to do when I'm sad is read and also this sometimes I want to read only sad books to feel the sadness and like to just stay in the sad mood and to feel sad more because of the books and sometimes I will read something else because I really want to not think about being sad so I feel like it really depends on how much sad I am and like why I'm sad so as I feel like I don't really have an answer for it it just really really depends on the situation now the next question is most often do you use reading to escape to learn or to critically reflect so for me 100% is to escape I love reading books because for me I feel like a lot of times it makes me feel like I'm not in our world anymore and I'm in this book world and in what happening to the characters I feel like it really makes me escape my reality but in a fun way I use it as entertainment I really love reading it's like watching a movie or a tv show for me and the thing is that I love learning stuff and I feel like you can learn a lot of things from fiction books like for example you can learn a lot about a specific culture that is represented in a book or just specific subject that is part of the life of the characters that you don't really aware of or you don't really have a lot of knowledge in so I feel like also in fiction books you can learn a lot but I can't really actively learn from a book and I'm talking about non-fictions I just can't really read non-fictions I tried a few times in my life and I guess that I will keep trying because I do want to read some but I feel like in general I just can't actually read a book that's the only thing in the book is giving you information because I really need this entertainment and to be a part of a story and of a plot and if there is a lot of knowledge in the plot itself and if I'm learning from the book it's just a bonus for me but it's definitely necessary for me to have a book being fun to me for me to want to learn from it so definitely I use reading to escape and if I learn something from the book it's just a bonus now the next question is what is the book that made you laugh out loud and for me the book that I'm thinking about right away is Dial A for Aunties by Jess Q. Santanto and this book is so hilarious like it was so funny and such a good time definitely one of the most funny books that I think that I ever read it was such a good time and if you are looking for a funny book this is definitely the perfect one I also really recommend the audiobook because the narrator was amazing and made the whole experience so much more funny and amazing but basically here we are following a woman that works in the wedding business with her family she's basically the photographer I think and her family has a business and the thing is that her family is a really strict Asian family and they are just so funny she has a ton of aunts that are really taking care of her and she just needs to learn how to deal with her overprotective aunts but at the same time living a whole life and feeling independent and in summary this is a cosmic mystery it means that there is a mystery and something happens but we are kind of following the villain itself it's just very very weird but very fun because of it and I just think like it was such a good time and again I really recommend the audiobook and it was just such a funny book now the next question is what a book that made you cry or if you don't cry one that really moved you so I do cry from books if the book is emotional enough for me and if the book is touching for me and definitely the author that I think of right away is Colin Hoover because I love Colin Hoover I say it all the time and her books always make me cry Colin Hoover just know how to touch me and I feel like the most of her books made me cry Ugly Love was the first one that I read by her and I really cried a lot Regretting You also one of the recent books that I read by her also made me cry November 9 a really sad book Without Merit a really underrated one that I really love all of those made me cry and those are just ones that I'm thinking about right now so there is a lot Colin Hoover just in general always make me cry and another book that made me cry so much is The Wicked Deep 
Pasha and Joe basically the reason is because this was my most favorite book that I read last year and my experience reading it was so intense I feel like I was so in the story itself and I felt the characters so much I cried I think most of my reading while I read this book like I was just sobbing while I read it because I felt all the emotions I felt so in the story I don't feel like I read a book with such experience for years like this book touched me so much and I can't really explain why I think it's because the writing I just felt all the emotions that you can possibly feel from a book it was just so amazing and I just remember that I cried so much from this book because I was so touched from everything that happened in the book I just felt everything and again it's my most favorite book that I read last year and this is one of the reasons because I just really felt what is going on in the book and it definitely made me cry a lot okay so now the next question is what is a book that you didn't even know how you felt about so I feel like the books that I'm most conflicted about are books that I'm giving usually three and a half stars because I feel like three stars is book that was average and was nice but I just liked it and not more and four stars and more are books that I absolutely loved and this is the reason that I gave them four stars or more because I just love them but three and a half star books are just the thing that is between books that are, were okay and books that I really really love and those are usually books that I feel like I'm just not sure what I'm thinking about do I love them or do I not love them and the best example that I can think about right now is Idol Gossip by Alexandra Lee Young this is the first book that I read in 2022 and I did enjoy it like I really enjoyed it it's basically following a teenage girl that got recruited by a scout of a k-pop company she's basically moved to Seoul in South Korea with her family and now she's going to be a trainee to basically train and to be a k-pop idol and I really love books that are talking about k-pop because I really love k-pop and books that are about those subjects and I feel like this book had so much information about the k-pop industry it had things that I didn't see in any other book about k-pop and I feel like this book had just so much real information that I didn't see other books talk about and I really loved how deep dived it went into k-pop it also showed some dark stuff about k-pop which is really important to me to discuss and to be aware of because there is very dark stuff in k-pop and I feel like he talked about the subjects in a really good way and also the good stuff he talked about also the happy moments in k-pop and how is it to be a part of a group and how is it to connect with your fans it had such good things about this book and at the same time there were some major stuff that really disappointed with me first of all there were two really big stuff that happened that are related to k-pop and related to how this main character got into the k-pop company i'm talking about the auditions and about the contract that she signed and both of them were really different from the things that i personally know about k-pop and how k-pop works so i'm not sure that those two parts were realistic and i feel like those two stuff were really major in the start of the book so it really messed me up that on one side it has such real and deep information about k-pop and at the same time it took really two major stuff and made them not realistic not what actually happens but the thing that bothered me the most about this book was the main character i loved all the characters in the book there was also really good representation here and i also loved that it was only contemporary without romance so i did love the characters and the plot and everything but specifically the main character i feel like she was the actual villain of the story because all the thing that happened was because of her like she just acted so meanly to her group mates and the other characters in the book were so mature and really tried to be okay with her and to solve the issues between them but she was so childish and always chose the wrong decisions and I really feel like she was the real villain of the book because she was the character that I hated the most the majority of the things that aren't the k-pop dark things but the things that are related to her the majority of them happened because the way she acted and she was so not okay to the other characters so she was definitely the character that I hated the most so you see how much I'm conflicted about this book like I did love it it was so fun to read it and to deep dive into k-pop and to see such a good and interesting plot for me because I really love k-pop and this subject but at the same time his main character and those really big subjects really made me not say that I love the book because I can't say that this is a four star or this is a four and a half star because I did enjoy it but I also didn't enjoy it you get how much I'm conflicted about this book but like in general I still recommend this book I really enjoyed it like you see but I also really didn't enjoy it 
at the same time. So I'm just really conflicted about it. Okay, so now the next question is, are you more likely to read on a sunny day or on a cloudy day? So I'm likely to read in any day because I will read just when I want to and when I'm in a mood to read. So it's not really matter what is the weather outside because I usually read at home. But if there is rain outside and if it's a cloudy day and I just hear the sound of rain, I will likely be more in a reading mood because of it. Because if I'm imagining a perfect reading night, it will be causing up with a blanket when there is rain outside. So definitely a cloudy day makes me more in a reading mood. But it doesn't really matter because also if there is a sunny day, if I want to read, I will just read. Now the next question is, do you usually set the mood when you read music, lights, smells, etc.? And the answer is yes. I love to set the mood. It's just so fun. I'm not always doing it. And I feel like I was doing it so much more when I was little because throughout all of my life, usually when I was reading, because I had some months that I wasn't reading and some months that I was more in a reading mood, I read something like three, four books a month, which is still amazing. So because reading wasn't something that I'm doing every day, when I was reading, I would really set the mood and I would go really extreme. I would put candles and background music that is related to the theme of the story. Like for example, fantasy book, I would put a fantasy music that is reminding the vibe of the book. So it's definitely something that I really love to do. And today I still do it, but not as much just because I read all the time. And sometimes I pick a book just for a few minutes. I want to really set the mood. But if I know that now I have a few hours to read and I have a set time that I can make myself relax and read, I will usually will set the mood because it's just so fun. It really puts me in the book and really helps me get more into the characters, into the world, because I really love to imagine that like I'm there in the story and in the plot. So setting the mood really helps me to feel like I'm more in the book. So I feel like you understand what I mean, but it's really fun to set the mood. And the next question is, can you leap from book to book or do you need a buffer time between them? So again, I feel like it really depends on the situation and what I'm reading and also how much I'm in a reading mood. But I did notice on myself that I tend to not pick a book right away when I finish a book book at the same day if it's a regular book not just the graphic novel that it took me an hour to read but I do tend to love to take at least one day of a break but again it really depends on how much I'm in a reading mood and also what I read how much it emotionally drained me and also when I finish a book because usually I tend to finish books in the evening but if I'm in the weekend and I will finish a book in the morning I will likely pick another book because I have a full day to read so again it really depends on the situation also specifically audiobooks I feel like I can finish an audiobook and then pick right away a physical book because those two are some kind of a different experience for me. But yes, I can jump from book to book. I can also start reading a new book half an hour after I finish the previous one. But usually I do prefer to take a break, like at least for the night, just to sleep about what I read. So yes, it just depends. But if I read a book, I can definitely start another book the day after. Just most of the times, not an hour after. And yes, oh my god, this was the moody book tag. It was so fun to answer the questions. I feel like it's often to me to talk about me being a mood reader because again it's a very big part of my reading and also those questions were really really fun. Again I will link Brittany's original video in the video description so you can check the original tag video out. And yes it was just so fun to answer everything. I really love book tags. And before I will go please tell me are you a mood reader? Do you consider yourself a mood reader? Extreme one like me or just a little bit of a mood reader? Please let me know. And yes I really really hope that you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye everyone!